Hi, Bob here from Insidium, and on today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be recreating this Particle Sparks rig. Now, we're doing this in the context of this New Year's message, but of course, you can use this rig for any scene that requires these Sparks effects. So, let's jump in. In our scene, we have this text spline primitive, which we've spelt out with Happy New Year. Now, we need to create a custom spline to emit particles from, and the way we need to do that is a freehand version of this text. So to do it, let's go with F5 to get our orthographic views, and let's make the front one our main view. And all we need to do is create a freehand spline, and the way we do that is go to the spline pen tools, and instead of using the spline pen, we're going to use the sketch tool. Now, this is easier with a pen, but look we can do it with a mouse and we're just going to make some freehand lines they don't need to be that precise and this is going to be the start of our text and you can see look it's made this spline up here and if we keep this selected and move to the next letter it'll just add this section to that one spline object so we can emit from it so we want to do something like that and keep working our way across now i'm not going to do that full thing i've got one pre-made let's hit f1 to get back to perspective view going to make our text spline invisible and if i make this text spline visible this is the one that i've done in advance and there you go we've got our uh, writing so let's get this xp emitter and in the object tab we're going to set the emitter shape to object mode we're going to drag in our text spline we're going to emit from the edges then if we go to the emission tab we've got it set to rate it's on a thousand um, particles per second we've got a speed of 100 variation of 50 radius of 2 variation of 1 and if we hit play you'll see that we're getting particles coming off this um, spline if we go to the display tab you can see we've got it set to circle mode just so we can see the radius the color mode is set to gradient parameter with this gradient being mapped to the particle radius on auto so the big particles are white the smallest particles are orange okay so now what we're going to do is get some physics in here let's go to nexus and we'll bring in a gravity so they fall to the floor let's switch off visible in editor so now those particles are being emitted and falling down okay and now we want to what we're going to do is we're going to limit their speed and we're going to do that based on their radius but first we want these to be getting smaller and smaller until they disappear so we need to do that with a nexus nx scale modifier let's bring that under the gravity so the gravity is calculated first then the scale we want to change the value over time but we don't want them to get bigger we want them to get smaller so let's put a negative value here minus 0.2 with loads of variation we can switch off that clamp limit so now they're getting smaller over time yep yeah, until they disappear and we're going to adjust this later should we wish now once they get to zero we actually want them to die so we can do that with a question let's go to nexus and add an nx question and this uh, question we need to add a question here look and what we're going to say is if the particle not the age we want to say the radius if the radius equals zero then do something and we want that that something to be to kill them so let's add an action by default it'll set their color to yellow when their radius gets to zero that's not what we want we want to not set we want to kill so now when we hit play those particles it won't look any different but as they scale down and get to zero they will then be dead all right now we want to adjust their speed because they're falling too quickly and we want these to be um, our kind of fireworky sparks so let's go to nexus and we're going to bring in an nx speed modifier let's bring that one to the bottom so that's happening last and what we want to do is we want to clamp their maximum speed actually so this is how we're going to set it up we're going to set the operation to acceleration but actually put that on zero so there's no acceleration going on this is exactly the same as it was before but now i'm able to activate this clamp max speed and i'm going to clamp that maximum speed at say 300 centimeters or maybe 400 centimeters so even though the gravity is trying to accelerate them quicker and quicker and quicker they're not allowed to go faster than 400 centimeters all right but now what we're going to do is map this 400 centimeters 
So the largest particles are allowed to go this fast, but the smaller particles have a lower speed limit, so they're traveling more slowly. And the way we do that is with data mapping. Let's go to the mapping tab. We're going to add a radius map, so it's looking at the particle radius, and the range of that radius is between 0 and 3 centimeters. The parameter we want to map isn't the exponential, which is this value. We don't want to map that. We want to map uh, particle speed max. So let's have a look. Uh, not exponential. We want clamp max speed. There we go. So now what this is saying is particles that are very small have a much lower maximum speed. And you can see the smaller ones, they see they're slowing down and slowing down and the bigger ones are allowed to go quick. So that's working quite well. Let's lift it up so they don't actually come to a complete stop. And maybe move this graph out a little bit. So only the largest ones have got that initial burst of speed. OK, let's add some more particles into this. Let's go to the mission tab and put it on, say, 50 thousands so we've got loads more being born now and yeah we're starting to get the look that we want we need to add a little bit of turbulent movement in this in fact look let's change that display mode now that we've looked at that radius let's put it on a more sparky display mode we can put it on lines which stretch the faster they go so these are going to look like sparks yeah that's better now let's get some turbulent movement in there we'll go to nexus and bring in a turbulence and we'll put the turbulence uh, before the speed we want the speed to happen last because the turbulence could try and make the particles get quicker and quicker let's go to the object we'll put it on foreign noise we're gonna have this really strong uh, bring the persistence down put the octaves up for detail but large swirls and let's see what we're getting yeah we're starting to get this nice kind of wavy turbulence that's looking pretty cool I think we could um, maybe increase their speed limit so they are able to fall a bit more. Let's go to that speed and adjust this up to maybe 500. Yeah, that's looking more spark-like, isn't it? Cool. That's looking excellent. Right, let's go to our emitter and then let's emit loads. Let's say 150,000. And the last thing we can do is actually have these animate off. Um and on so the way we do that is with our text spline we can actually animate this on if we go to utilities and bring in an xp spline growth let's make this a child of our text and now look if i move this we can animate this on and off so on frame zero let's put a keyframe then on say frame 60 let's have it animated onto full let's go to frame 100 add another keyframe on full and then on frame i don't know 160 put it down to zero so what we have is an animated text that kind of draws on and then wipes off and that means if we make that text invisible and put our emitter back on now our particles draw on that looks cool we get our fiery sparky look and then they're wiped off brilliant so that is how we can make this spark effect now we've obviously done it on a spline a text spline but you can use this spark rig on any kind of spline or objects in your scene when you want sparks to be emitted and if we go to the window picture viewer you can see that when we render this with a nice additive material with motion blur the effect really comes to life when we get these cool super hot uh, firework particles and of course you can change the color of these you can animate your um, words individually so they write on you can have different colors for different um, parts of the text uh, loads of options it's a really nice look and pretty simple to set up so that's it for this year we'll see you in 2025